actually do not agree with this legislation at all. Um, myriad of problems with uh, this bill as well as pretty much everything that's come about in the last eight years um, as well as uh, what's come about in the last eight months. So out of this bill, um, if you're an adult when you turn 18 and you can drink when you're 21, um, how come in this bill people are encouraged to carry their children on their insurance policy until they're 26. And I'd like to answer. Thank you, sir. Family policy is a family yes. policy. Some, some, some uh, people are students. If they're out of their own, they can get their own insurance. If they make less than uh, uh, 133% of poverty, they can get the Medicaid card, uh, or they can uh, go into the exchange with affordability credits. Uh, so I have a two-part question. One is, why is that bill? For anybody who in the room doesn't know what AHR 676 is, it's a proposal for a single payer universal health care system. That's what people call socialized medicine, and I personally support it wholeheartedly. Now, my question is two part. One is why are you not supporting it? And the second part, the second part is if the answer is from pragmatic considerations then if you weren't an elected official, if you would look into your heart and your conscience, what would you think be the best healthcare system to solve all the problems in the United States with healthcare? I do support the co-sponsor of 676. It's easiest to describe as a Medicare for everybody. When you're born, you get a Medicare card. Um, there's some things we can do together better than everybody else on their own, and I think that would uh, be the best way to provide health care for how every other person here, the industrialized nation does it. Again, I just wanted to thank you for your time. And I did want to thank the tea baggers for coming out with their own. So, um, <laughs> good to see you guys. Good to see everybody participating. Um, the question I had, actually, I've worked for Eli Lilly in the past in patient assistance programs, uh, especially as pertaining to the seniors that can't obtain insulin. I was hoping to just get your sign off on the idea that you will fight for the government being able to negotiate these drug prices with a public option. I'm a small business owner from down in Charles City. My business is actually in New Kent. And uh, I, I agree there's some things that need to be done with health care. Uh, uh, I believe insurance companies shouldn't be able to drop you because of a pre existing condition, or deny you because of a pre existing condition. Uh, I believe that they uh, shouldn't be able to raise, you know, it should be a flat rate. Uh, I think there needs to be some health care, I mean, as far as the medical tort reform. We need to do something about these uh, previous lawsuits. I've, I've heard that 15% uh, of our health care costs are related to uh, tort issues, for lack of a better term. And I think that, uh, you know, if, if you have a problem with the insurance companies, Maybe you could use the uh, antitrust laws to if they, you think they've gotten too big. Yes. But uh, I do not believe we should be providing free health care for illegal aliens. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in this country should not be paying for somebody who's not. I'm going to cut off there on that point, and then you can. Uh, illegal aliens are specifically excluded from benefits from the bill. Well, 
you know, we have, we have people like myself and small business are very skeptical of government-run programs. I mean, look at the post office. And we're talking about we're talking about a nine trillion dollar deficit. Can we afford this program with that kind of numbers coming out? Yeah. Yeah. You add up all the payments for liability payments, it's 1.5% of the health care dollar. Um, and frivolous, the um, major proposals are caps on damages, and there's nothing to, to conform caps on damages to frivolous. You can have some very expensive lawsuits that are not at all frivolous, uh, that are very expensive, and some that are under the cap that wouldn't be dealt with uh, at all. Um, the, uh, if you had the most draconian, most aggressive tort reform, um, estimates are it might reduce costs. Some states with aggressive tort reform have higher malpractice rates than some without. So it's not a consistent pattern. Uh, but at most, you'd be talking about 30% uh, of the malpractice costs, which are only 1.5% to begin with. So. Um, it might make a difference, but in terms of overall, with the health care costs going up 10 to 15 percent a year, um, addressing half of 1 percent uh, wouldn't make that much difference.